1997, Laborio Barney Bellamo's meteoric rise up the Genovese crime family nearly came to a permanent end, when family consigliere James Little Jimmy Eda allegedly wanted to have him whacked. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the story where it is claimed that Genevieve's family consigliere, James Little Jimmy Eda, wanted to whack the family's street boss, Liborio Barney Bellamo. As many of you know, Liborio Barney Bellamo was a Cosa Nostra prodigy. His father, Salvatore, was a Genovese soldier who passed away when Barney was a young man. It is famously alleged that prior to his death, Salvatore Bellamo, knowing that he was going to die, spoke with Anthony Fat Tony Salerno and asked him to look out for his son, as without him, there wouldn't be anyone looking out for Barney on the street. I will cover Barney Bellamo's rapid rise up the Genovese ranks in more detail in a future video. But for now, here are the highlights. Barney Bellamo became a made man at the staggeringly young age of 20. He was sponsored into the family by Genovese soldier and future government informer, Vincent the Fish Cafaro. Barney was in the 116th Street Crew under Captain Severio Sammy Black Santora, who would go on to become Barney's closest friend and mentor. Sammy Black Santora was promoted by Vincent Cingiganti to the position of acting underboss in the early 1980s, and he would become the official underboss by 1985. When Santora was diagnosed with cancer, he promoted Bellamo to the position of acting captain of the 116th Street Crew, despite being still in his late 20s. Sammy Black Santora died in 1987 of natural causes, and it is said by former Genovese lawyer Peter Peluso that Barney changed dramatically. He had been promoted to official captain of the 116th Street Crew, still at the age of only 30, and he'd started to act like Sammy. Peluso said that Bellamo acted like he was running the show from day one. Barney was known to be extremely cautious of government surveillance and would often only have meetings at night. He was also known to travel on motorbike down one-way streets to lose government tails. He would also have meetings in Hispanic and black neighbourhoods where he believed they would be easier to spot federal agents. In 1990, family boss Vincent Chin Giganti was arrested on racketeering charges, including the famous Windows case. It was revealed by crime investigator Kenneth McCabe that Giganti had made the 33-year-old Liborio Barney Bellamo his acting boss or street boss of the family. Some sources even suggest that Giganti had already made Barney his street boss two years prior to his arrest in 1988. Barney remained in the position of acting boss even when Giganti was back on the street facing his legal issues and he would remain in the role right up until his arrest in 1996. After a two-year investigation, the FBI and NYPD rounded up numerous Genovese family mobsters and associates, including Nicholas Nicky the Blonde Fustacci, Anthony Tony Waterguns Pisapia, and James Pisacaro, amongst several others. But along with Barney Bellamo, the two other most important mobsters arrested were acting underboss Michele Mickey Damano Generuso and family consigliere James the Little Guy Eda. The whole group of Genovese mobsters were charged in a 65 count indictment. For Barney, this included the murders of Ralph Cousin Di Simone and Anthony Hickey Di Lorenzo, along with conspiracy, labour racketeering and extortion charges. Michele Mickey Damano Generuso was 78 at the time of the 1996 arrest and was probably at that time as old school and as low key as you could get. He was allegedly made back when Charlie Luciano was still head of the family. Generuso was allegedly put in charge of the Jewish associates of the Genovese family and quietly amassed a fortune. 
he eventually became a captain and had the likes of future captain Alphonse Alichez Mangalone in his crew. He would become acting underboss for acting boss Liborio Bellamo and had avoided any serious legal problems for over seven decades until the 1996 arrest. Born in 1940, James the Little Guy Ida, also known as Little Jimmy, was inducted into the Genovese family in the late 1970s. He served in the Little Italy-based crew of Genovese powerhouse Matthew Matty the Horse Ianiello. Allegedly, Little Jimmy would serve as chauffeur to Matty the Horse and was also his protégé. When Matthew Ianiello went away on racketeering charges in the late 80s, the respected Ida took over as captain of his old crew. Ida was allegedly active in the concrete and bricklayers unions and his brother Joe was also a made guy in the Little Italy crew. After family consigliere Louis Bobby Manor went away for life in 1989, little Jimmy Ida would become acting consigliere and then took over the position officially in 1991. Ida was serving in this position at the time of the 1996 arrests. Now, let's take a quick look at the two murders that the Genovese hierarchy were charged with. Anthony Hickey de Lorenzo was a Genovese soldier who the family suspected of being an informer. After coming out of prison in the mid to late 1980s, de Lorenzo was beginning to behave differently. Future Lucchese acting boss Al Diarco, who had served time with him, said that Hickey started to act strange and was openly and loudly talking about drug deals. The Genovese soldier was also seen in the company of longtime heroin trafficker Joseph Jobeck di Palermo of the Lucchese family. According to Al Diaco, he spoke with James Eder about Di Lorenzo's weird and outspoken behaviour. But little Jimmy was already aware, and he said, You know what we're going to do, right? We're going to whack him. On November the 25th, 1988, Anthony Hickey Di Lorenzo was in his house in West New York, New Jersey, when a jogger saw a man shooting into Di Lorenzo's front door. The shooter of Di Lorenzo is believed to have been James Eder's brother, Joe. Ralph Di Simone was an associate of the Genovese family, and in January 1991, James Eder was at a meeting with the now acting boss of the Lucchese family, Al Diarco, and acting Lucchese underboss Anthony Baratta. Little Jimmy passed a list of potential Genovese inductees to the pair for their feedback. And when Baratta saw Ralph D. Simone's name on the list, he said, He's a rat. A follow-up meeting was scheduled for February, and in attendance from the Genovese side was Liborio Bellamo, Mickey Damino Generuso, and Jimmy Eda. Representing the Lucchese was Al Diarco, Anthony Baratta, and the acting consigliere, Stephen Stevie Wonder Crea. Baratta reiterated his stance that Ralph T. Simone was a rat, and according to Al Diarco, Generuso then stepped forward and said, We'll take care of it, and made a trigger pulling motion with his index finger. On June the 13th, 1991, Ralph, cousin D. Simone, 55, was found dead in the trunk of his car at LaGuardia Airport. And so, almost immediately after the indictments had come down, Barney Bellamo's lawyer, Benjamin Brafman, started negotiations with the prosecution. He said that Bellamo was willing to take a plea deal if the prosecution dropped the double homicide charges. Barney and Mickey Damino Generuso were then subjected to a series of lie detector tests carried out from July to December 1996. All the tests were concerning the Ralph De Simone murder. During one of the tests carried out by Catherine A. Arthur, Barney was asked the following questions. Did you know of any plan to murder Ralph De Simone? Did you murder Ralph De Simone? Did you see Ralph De Simone get murdered? Five minutes before Ralph De Simone's body was found at LaGuardia Airport, did you already know he was dead? Bellamo and Generuso both passed 
or the polygraph test they were given. The FBI and the prosecution refused to believe the results from the test, which Bellamo's defence claimed were 96 to 98% accurate. All the tests were carried out by independent experts, with one forensic polygraphist and former NYPD detective stating of Bellamo, I don't believe he participated in any plot with any of the individuals who killed De Simone. According to a tip from a jailhouse informer, the feds believed that Barney Bellamo had been taking a psychoactive drug prior to each polygraph so he could beat the test. But after the feds obtained a court order to shave Barney's head and tested his hair, they found no trace of lithium. Not wanting to let two of their prized arrests off the hook completely, the prosecution struck a deal to drop the murder charges for Bellamo and Jenna Russo. Bellamo receiving a 10-year deal for extortion, although his defence team were hoping for four years. And the 79-year-old Jenna Russo was sentenced to 18 to 21 months. Both men had to forfeit $250,000. While Generuso and Bellamo's lawyers had immediately started making a deal with the prosecution, James Eder would not and did not entertain such an idea. He was apparently livid that the pair had been arranging plea bargains. He was also fuming that Bellamo had managed to convince not just Generuso but five others to plead guilty rather than go to trial. The enraged little Jimmy allegedly reached out to official boss Vincent Chingiganti and asked to have Bellamo murdered in federal custody. The FBI warned Barney's attorneys that their client was in extreme danger and they even placed James Eder in solitary confinement. Some believe that Giganti refused Eder's request to murder the man he had personally picked to be his successor. Although, some speculate that the Eda murder threats were actually concocted and orchestrated by the FBI to unsettle the mobsters concerned. Although reports of Eda's anger are believed to be genuine. Barney would eventually serve 12 years due to an additional charge added a few years later while he was incarcerated. He'd be released in 2008 and is now believed to be the official head of the family. As for James the little guy Eda, not only was he firmly against the plea deals taken by Generuso and Bellamo, the prosecution also offered him the chance of a 15 year sentence, a plea deal which he refused. James Eda, the mobster with old school views, decided to go to trial and was found guilty of murder conspiracy and racketeering. He was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. I've included the links to some of the books used in the research for this video in the description and top comment below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.